Good evening. Welcome to the October 13th Kettleva Hills Board of Commissioners meeting. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> And if you would please join us for a moment of silence before we continue on with our agenda. Thank you. Okay, first on the agenda this evening or next is the agenda approval. I make a motion we approve the agenda as submitted, presented. I'll second. Okay, any discussion or questions? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thank you. Okay, uh, we move now on to the first time that's set aside this evening for public comment. This is an opportunity for anyone who wishes to address the board on any item to, to bring that forward to us. <coughs> and we do ask that if you're speaking as an individual that you limit your comments to three minutes and if you're speaking on behalf of a group if you would keep those comments to five minutes. That way we make sure that everybody who wishes to speak has an opportunity to do so. We did have a sign-up sheet this evening. Um, if you didn't sign up that's okay. We'll call from the sign-up sheet first and then we'll move on to anyone else that still wishes to speak. Um, first on the sign-up sheet is Daryl Davies. Welcome. And when you um, approach the podium, when you do come to speak, if you would identify yourself by name and address, please. Um, if you can put on, it's a PDF that has a map. Uh, there's only two PDFs. I'm not sure which one. My name's Daryl Davies, um, 121 Porthole Court. Um, part of the committee that was put together, initially it was the bomb track committee, and then it became more of a uh, smaller committee for just the funding and design of a potential disc golf course for Kill Double Hills. Sorry about that. Um, a couple things. Uh, since since uh, commissioners met, they asked for a small committee to be put together so we can come up with a possible design and cost of that design. And on the committee was myself, was also Derek Dale, who works with Quibble. Uh, engineering and also Bob or Robert Sanders who's owner of Tortugas who's a very avid disc golf player. Um, what we had done is taken first the considerations of the committee for the bomb track and what and designing a course. Uh, we were looking for things one that's low impact on the grounds one at, another one being that it was financially feasible one a high cost to the town to make this happen. Um, we've been offered from a family the Logans to also help and fund this not entirety but part of it and there are also some other ways of funding the difference so we'll not get into that tonight but I just want to promote or show you what we've done a couple of things um, in making this we understood that when surface 678 came in and presented their plan that there was a portion of the land that was dedicated to the disc golf course we understand that and we understand that the disc golf course it can change over time it could by the town if they wanted to say we want to we have something else that's more important for the town we got to take this up um, we can rearrange the holes to work around other ideas and we can also scale it back to fit into the surface 678 plan when that does come into fruition if it does come into fruition over time um, but since right now that plan is really years down the road I would say at least a decade um, because the town's got their funding in other areas um, we went ahead and created a disc golf course that utilized the entire land currently unless something else comes up which it can be adjusted and moved because we're only talking about pulling up metal poles and removing them around um, and saying that that's one of the things the town would have to agree to can we do this with the property um, other things that we've done in this is one we've created a parking lot that you can see in the top right hand corner it's set back on our diagram 12 feet codes 10 feet from the adjoining property where the ropes course is um, again based off engineering needs uh, it's three 36 people on 18 whole course one car for every three people that's 12 spots so that's how we came up with the number of spots for the parking lot also for ADA compliance we have to have one handicap parking spot from that spot it has to be paved 
and they have to have access to the first hole and then they have to have access from the end of the 18th hole back to the parking spot. Because this can be moved back to just the area that was originally designated for the disc golf course, we created the 18th and the first hole and the paths that are permanent because of the ADA in the area. So if anything ever had to change, those holes and those paths wouldn't have to change. So we're trying not to do things but once if possible. Um, one of the things we're asking is, you know, for restrooms, we're just trying to see if we can get away in the beginning with a porta potty rather than permanent plumbing. We're trying to do this in two phases if possible. One is build the course and have the necessary means like the access to, with the parking lot and bathrooms and trash cans there. And as we've developed the course and as time goes by, we get to see how much attention the actual disc golf course is getting before we spend more money, meaning we go in and we pave the roads there. We add infrastructure with electrical and plumbing and hydrants and things like that, which the cost of the disc golf course compared to the infrastructure is so far apart, it would have to make a lot more sense for us to spend that kind of money, and that's our way of thinking on this. But again, the town will have to make their discretion on what <coughs> the town requires or is going to require out of this development for the disc golf course. Um, one of the other things we had to take in consideration is the mulch pit or mulch pile. We wanted to make sure that there was um, some type of buffer between the course and the pile. Um, up until now, there's no reason for anyone to be on the property. It would be considered trespassing if you were on the property. And with the mulch pile there, we want to make sure that it's protected and people know not to go there. So on our proposal, we've got a split level fence that's um, on average it's 40 feet buffer from the fence to the mulch pile except for right where the entrance is where it's going to get a little bit tighter because of the way the road system works right there. Um, other than that, uh, if the if town has any questions, we'd love to answer questions, but our point in this is we want to give this to you now, give you a chance to look it over, uh, have the town look at it, get all the questions in that you can come up with, and then we can follow up at a next meeting or the next meeting that you put us on and we can answer, you know, go through the final details and see if we can push forward with this. But right now, we just wanted to introduce the plan to you with the cost, which um, I've emailed all you a cost sheet so you can see exactly what the costs are. And um, I've got on this disk that I've turned in images of examples of what we're discussing here as far as uh, for the Porta John, we just don't want it standing out in the middle, so we have fencing around it to kind of hide it. Yeah. Uh, we have a, what's an outdoor kind of a informational sign so if people want to put posts up um, about disc golf, they can. Um, other than that, it's an 18-hole course with a practice hole. Um, we're looking at designing the course with the intention of making it uh, for professionals that would want to come here. They'd want to play this course. We also made it so for recreational players or beginning players that they could also enjoy the course. Um, so with the holes, if you know um, about disc golf, some holes we have multiple baskets, some holes we have multiple tees. Um, it just allows for a variation of players to really enjoy the course, but the main point being is we want all types of players to want to come here to play the course. Um, and you'll, if you go online and you look up other disc golf courses around here, they all get reviews and we want to start having positive reviews for what we're developing. Uh, we did have Inova, which is a huge company, uh, and the disc golf industry, they make disc, the throwing discs, they make the baskets, they do consultation for course development, and they also build courses. Um, we are lucky enough to have a professional player who lives in the Outer Banks, Lewis, who called in a favor and had Inova actually come out here and walk the grounds with us. So they've already given us our recommendations on the course design, and um, we've put them into our plan. And um, like I say, if you have any questions, we're, we're here to answer any questions, and uh, we're obviously my, you know how to contact me. <laughs> okay. Thank Is that you. Good? Thanks, Daryl. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on in the commissioner's agenda also. Thank you. Okay. Um, next, Mr. Ron Curtis is here. My name is Ron Curtis. I live at 1817 Bay Drive. I'm here tonight uh, representing the North Carolina Alliance Visually Impaired Fishing Tournament. Uh, our tournament will be this coming week, October 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Uh, we will fish from four local piers and two headboats. Uh, I've, before I forget, I want to thank the town manager and your town staff for linking us to your website and putting some posters up for us. 
Uh, this will be the 32nd year for the visually impaired fishing tournament. It has become the largest event of its kind in the world, folks. Uh, this year, the North Carolina Alliance have a uh, uh, float in the Rose Bowl Parade. There are five sporting events from around the world and the North Carolina Alliance Visually Impaired Fishing Tournament from the Outer Banks of North Carolina is one of the five and is highlighted in all of their graphics. Uh, we will have 328 plus or minus visually impaired that will come to the Outer Banks from 77 counties in North Carolina. They will represent 11 states and Canada. Uh, these folks, when they come to us, they don't get out much. Uh, they may get outside of their home once or twice a week. Uh, their experience is roughly 10 to 15 miles uh, from their home. And this is a major, major event for them in their lives. We will have educational programs for them. We will house them. We will feed them eight meals while they're here. Um, it will cost about $225,000 for this event to be put on. And in our community, about half of that amount uh, comes to us from in-kind donations from local businesses. Uh, without those businesses, we would not be able to hold this event. Uh, we will be fishing from the piers on Tuesday. We would invite you, if you have an opportunity, to come out and experience uh, what we're doing and uh, have some fun with us. Uh, if there are any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer those for you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thanks, what, Ron. what is the time on Tuesday for your? Uh, they will fish from the piers 9 to 2.30. Okay. Uh, Jeanette's will house the largest number, uh, and there will um, there'll be about 200, close to 200, on that pier along with um, volunteers who will be assisting and helping us score. And then Wednesday night at Westcott Park in Manio, uh, we have our awards banquet that is hosted by Kelly's uh, Restaurant. And uh, if any of you have an opportunity and would like to come, it, it's, it will change your life to experience uh, how these folks enjoy the hospitality of the Outer Banks. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. sharing this with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, Leo Clubs in uh, Manio High School and First Flight High School and Edenton uh, Holmes High School. And the, um, the Leos in those clubs come out and participate with us. Uh, they each get assigned to one of the visually impaired uh, on fishing day, uh, spend their time with them. And uh, I just can't express to you what happens between those students and the visually impaired people, how they bond and form relationships it's so uh, you have to come and see it uh and we wish you would come out and join us yeah. thank you so much thanks. Thank you. Thanks. is there anyone else that wishes to speak at this public comment time yeah. okay we have two hands either order is fine if you want to go and then yeah My name is John Arndt at 2023 Wrightsville, and the sole purpose for me being here tonight is um, to try to get a, some kind of an update on the uh, hopefully proposed funding uh, for the uh, street improvement at uh, uh, on Wrightsville uh, going north from 8th Street. Um, I really don't know what the status is of that. I think there's been a request. Um, I just kind of look, I, it may be discussed later at this meeting, I really don't know. Um, but I'm just kind of looking for an update, if there is one. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, we will, in the response to public comment, 
we'll see what we can what information we can share all right thank you thank you okay. <coughs> temple October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we have a monthly meeting. Uh, Hotline sponsors a monthly domestic violence prevention meeting. And back in August, we talked with everybody at this meeting about opportunities to get the word out and, um, and ask for partners to share and help us in bringing uh, awareness to the people in this community. And we were so excited when uh, Sarah McDowell called us and, and invited us to hang the clothesline project here. And not only did she say that we wanted, they wanted to see the clothesline and they wanted, to, um, they wanted to have a picture taken. Some of the officers would have a picture taken with some of us and with the clothesline. And they invited us. Did I mention that? We are always having to ask people to play with us, and somebody <laughs> invited us to come and play with them, and we were just thrilled. She was so thoughtful in selecting the day. She chose the League of Women Voters meeting day, which was here last Wednesday, so there was a lot of traffic out here uh, Wednesday evening, and we were right here to greet people and explain what on earth we were doing with our laundry hanging out. And so we are just uh, delighted to be able to let you all know how much we appreciate our working relationship with the Kill Devil Hills Police Department. Nobody else invited us to play. <laughs> okay. You ready, John? Okay. <clears throat> It's October. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. In the early 1990s, a group in Massachusetts decided that one way to get the word out and raise awareness about domestic and sexual violence and violence against women and girls was to use the clothesline. We, they knew and we know that people used their, people read the clotheslines. We read clotheslines forever when people dried their clothes that way. You knew if someone was sick, you knew if they had company, um, you knew lots of things that were going on. You definitely knew when a new baby was born because you checked on their clothesline. So um, this is a way for people to read our clothesline and read the messages that women right here in our community have written. This project is really an incredible expression of anger, but also of healing. Women who have been abused take all of that hurt into themselves and hold it. And I have been so surprised at how releasing it is for them to sit down with a marker and just write a message. Some people drew faces, some people used words. We had one young woman come up and draw a beautiful painting on the shirt and said, one person's story may be a gift to another person to set them free. hung the clothesline first uh, earlier in the summer this year at Hotline 2. It was, uh, part of it was displayed at Pride Fest earlier in this, in the fall. We were, we had some of the t-shirts at Kmart for Safety Week. The shirt, the shirts are created by survivors. Um, in this project, Victims are people who are deceased, who have died in, because of domestic violence or sexual violence. Um, survivors are people who are still here and with us. So some of the shirts are created by family members and loved ones to honor or to memorialize uh, someone who is deceased. But most of our shirts are made by survivors right here in this community. Domestic violence and sexual assault are both are the most crippling things that humans can endure. So it's worth hanging up these messages of hope, uh, expressions of anger, proclamations of independence and freedom that they've all just done for themselves. So it's been a great project for us and we hope it's one we can continue. Hotline has been around since 1980 making it one of the Outer Banks' oldest nonprofits. Um, Hotline 
has a safe house that's located very conveniently in the community. We have people who will advocate with um, the courts, with magistrates, so that no one is ever alone as they go through this process. We have people available 24 hours a day to help you discuss your options, plan for your safety, and then give you directions on how to come directly to us if, you, if they need police help or if they need our own shelter to give them a, a moment of, of time to reflect. Um, our number is 473-3366 and it's, as I said, 24 hours a day. Very nice. John is very talented, that's yes, for yes. sure. So, yeah. and Sarah, thank you for what a great idea. Absolutely. So, it's nice how you guys all came together. Great piece. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to speak at this public comment time? Okay. Seeing no other hands, we'll move on to response to public comment. Um, uh, so you're going to cover the disc golf in your... Well, I have something to say, but if anybody's welcome to contribute right now, that'd be fine. Yeah, the only thing I'd, I had mentioned to, uh, to Daryl was that I'd like to see a spot that we could potentially have set aside for a dog park. So obviously all of the, right. the funding is potentially up in the air, but if we're going to potentially do this on a budget or with donations, then you know, that'd be a, I'd, I'd love to see that out there as well. Yeah, we talked about so. that. But her, him and I met Friday evening. We talked about doing that also. So, right. I'm, a, I'm also a big proponent of that too. So. Okay. Good. Nope, I'm fine. Nope. Okay. Thank you guys for all the work that you, yeah. you've done and put into Thank this. Yeah. Appreciate it. And um, we'll discuss it more under Mayor Pro Tem's agenda. Um, Mr. Curtis and your group, thank you so much again for coming and sharing your presentation or sharing with us about the, the tournament. We have the flyers and certainly I think any of us make an attempt to be there. I think you're right. It's one of those things to probably be there in person to really catch the full feeling and effect of it. But we appreciate you all coming out tonight and sharing this with us. Um, and Mr. Arm from Wrightsville in the back there. Okay. We do have a couple of things on our agenda tonight related to that, but I don't think the specific what, section of street improvement that is that that's included in the project. What I see. Mr. Arn is talking about was actually an ad alternate to the fall project. Okay. Do you either you or Pete mind speaking to that? Do you mind approaching? Just to maybe explain. I know we're going to talk about it in the agenda here in a moment, but maybe just reference what's going to be covered. Welcome, Pete. Thank you very much. It's great to be with you. Pete Burkheimer, Town Engineer. <clears throat> uh, what we'll be discussing under New Business Item 1 will be the recommendation for award of the fall winter project. It was bid as a base bid, which included the okay. Memorial Boulevard area, North Kitty Hawk Shores, the cross streets replacing the water mains, and mainly my personal favorite, the really large storm drainage improvements in the uh, ditch on the east side of Memorial. That's the base bit. That, that's mm -hmm. the biggie. But we included two smaller projects as additive alternates X and Y. Mr. Arndt is here about alternate Y, which is to do drainage and street improvements to Wrightsville uh, Boulevard from 8th Street north to uh, the end where it goes into the condo project. Uh, that's a relatively, and everything is relative in this business, inexpensive add-on, but it does put us looking to you to find some additional funds to do it. So, um, but we, in theory, you could take the whole package, including alternate X as well, but uh, Director Albright, who unfortunately is, is ill, uh, but well substituted for by Assistant Director Patrick. But Director Albright recommended that you either do the base bid or the base bid plus rightsful, and that'll be the choice that'll be before you tonight. Or, of course, you could award none of the above if you wish. But 
I'll be prepared to speak to it more when you're ready. Okay, I appreciate that, Pete. Thanks, thanks Pete. Yeah, thanks. And so um, we will then pick up this discussion further um, under new business in just a couple minutes. So, great. Okay. Okay. Um, and Temple, thank you so much. I think we. Did she? Yeah, we haven't left yet. Thank you. And again, John, thank you. And Sarah, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, let's move into introductions and presentations. I think the first one is um, Sarah will be up again. Uh, this is the KDH Police Department presentation on Watch for Me NC program. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Sarah McDowell. You don't need my address, do you? <laughs> no. no. Thank um, you. <laughs> we know where you live. Huh? Great. <laughs> or at least where you work. <laughs> All right, the Watch for Me NC grant, we were awarded the grant in May. And it's a materials grant. It wasn't actually money's grant. We were able to get uh, signs, bicycle lights, reflectors, things such as that. Um, but the main focus for the Watch for Me NC is just um, education and enforcement on bicycle and pedest uh, pedestrian sa safety. So here's the 2014 partners. Watch for Me NC started. They did a pilot program about two years ago. Uh, with the bottom five agencies, as you can see, Durham, Raleigh, Carborough, Chapel Hill, and Cary. Um, they worked them for two years, running nothing but education and proactive enforcement of bicycle and pedestrian laws. After two years, um, 2014 started, and we were one of nine um, agencies that were selected to be part of the, the Real Watch For Me program. So here are the counties that were selected for this year. A lot there in the Triangle area in Greenville and then of course us. We've got about two in the mountain area. So here's the overview. What started it, um, two years ago there were 2,400 North Carolina pedestrian collisions and then 960 involved bicycles a year. So that's a huge number just for one state. Um, the program started was evidence-based, built on those two years, pilot program there in the Triangle region, um, and then it was partner-led. So the uh, Highway Safety Research Center did all the fun science and research aspects of it, but actually the partners, which were all the agencies that went out and did the education, uh, went to schools, went to uh, meetings such as this and then did the enforcements. That's actually how the campaign was pushed along. So here are their goals. Of course, your short-term goal, raise awareness of pedestrian and bicycle safety issues. Um, educate on the relevant laws. Um, they educate not only the law enforcement, but the general public. And then our long-term goals were to support safer behavior and continue with bicycle pedestrian safe practices and then of course to prevent injuries and fatalities they did this with two key strategies the high visibility enforcement with your agencies that stop the the violators and either educate them or go ahead and write citations um, and then dissemination of the safety messages through billboards rack cards the bumper stickers that I'm sure uh, you guys have seen I look for bikes and watch for pedestrians that's how they did it they just littered the area with this stuff Through the research that they found, five key safety issues statewide. Now, these may or may not all pertain to the Outer Banks area, but statewide, these were the five issues that they were finding with the vehicle collisions. It was typically a, a driver failure to yielding to a pedestrian or a bike, whether it be at the crosswalk, while a bike was turning at intersections or driveways even. Um, failure to look or distractions, that's going to be your cell phones, and that's occurring both with um, bikers, walkers, and the motorists. Um, your pedestrians that dart out, we've seen those, the ones that just like to bolt across the highway really quickly. Um, bicyclists that just rides out into the intersection, fails to stop, they just go on as if they have the right of way. And then your driver that fails to safely pass or just overtakes a vehicle and, and clips them. So what they did was develop these partners to go out and do the education and enforcement. Um, and then each partner had a responsibility in order to get the grant. Um, we have to attend all the partner shared meetings, uh, send officers to law enforcement trainings, 
disseminate the materials that they give us, um, conduct enforcement operations, and report on them. So I'll go through each one of those individually. The partner shared meetings, it's done on the web, it's uh, on the web and then I, I'm typically on the cell phone or a telephone. Um, they discuss specific topics statewide. It's not just Outer Bank specific, but they love our input on it because we're a unique area. Um, and then we do one a month every month until the campaign technically is over in November. So November will be our last one. Law enforcement trainings. Uh, April 4th, they held a training here. Here was our representation. Uh, Kildova Hills PD, we sent nine officers. Uh, the Sheriff's Office sent six, duck five, and then two for the other three. Those are the six agencies that signed on board and joined the partnership to send out the application. So if an agency's missing, they didn't join the partnership. Um, what the training consisted of, it was a full day. It was free. They even fed the guys lunch, which everybody shows up to training when there's free food involved. Um, it consisted of a law refresher, specifically bicycle and pedestrian laws, nothing else. Um, enforcement and how to enforce it. Uh, crash investigation, specifically bicycle and pedestrian crashes as far as who has the right of way when they have a right of way, um, who's at fault, who's not at fault, and then how to set up an enforcement operation and then successfully testify to it in court. So it was a full day of, of pretty much bikes and pedestrian safety <laughs> and it was free and the state brought it to us. Uh, they gave us materials. I've put some of the materials on the back. Take what you would like. Um, if you want more or need more, come by the PD. I'll give you whatever you need, especially if you're handing it out. Uh, but the materials, of course, consisted of the posters, uh, the bumper stickers, we have some armbands that are reflective for you to put on. You can slide your driver's license in it while you go for a walk. Um, I'll put it on my foot while I'm riding a bike to keep my pants from catching in it. It's just a nice reflective um, piece of equipment. There's bike lights. If you need a bike light, put a bike light on. Um, and then we use this, law enforcement uses it. If we see somebody riding on the street without a bike light, it gives us an opportunity to stop, stop them, educate them on what they should be doing, and then go ahead and give them a bike light, make it a sweet um, encounter with law enforcement. And then we have to report. Um, every month we have to submit a report on what we did, uh, how much uh, stuff we sent out, how many lights we gave out, what kind of activities we did, how many enforcement activities, and then if we did an enforcement, we had to compare how much uh, citations were written versus warnings, and then how were just how many were just verbal uh, educational opportunities. Since we were awarded the grant in May, Kill Double Hills has had ten events, um, nine of which were educational, and then we had one that was actually an enforcement specific event. <clears throat> Here's what our partners were required to do. Uh, organize a <coughs> kickoff meeting to announce the start of the campaign. That was our, um, our kickoff meeting was the enforcement event we did on the, by, or the beach road. Six agencies partnered with us and then 20 agencies or um, other areas partnered with us, other organizations, including uh, Outer Banks Bicycle, Pedestrian Safety. There was two or three organizations in Hatteras that partnered with us. Most of the fire departments, including Kill Devil Hills Fire Department, partnered with us. The town uh, planning partnered with us. Um, the libraries, all the schools partnered with us, for, including Hatteras. So we, we got a lot of people that jumped on board with this. Here was our kickoff event. This is the one that we did on the beach road. That's the newspaper clipping from uh, the Sentinel. We put out announcements on the radio that advised that we were going to do this, that we were going to stop cars. This is how we were going to do it. We were going to walk across the street. If you didn't stop, we were going to stop you. We also announced it the day of the event and they talked about it. I know that Beach 104 talked about it during their little hour morning show about pedestrian and bicycle safety, just to kind of let folks know this is what was going on. If you can hit play. All right, Arnold Fairlands Outer Banks today, nearly 20 people were slighted in just two hours during the Watch For Me NC campaign today. 
police were watching for drivers who didn't stop for people crossing the busy road. News Channel 3's Tom Camillo is in Kill Devil Hills with a story you'll see only on 3. For two hours this afternoon, police officers from across the Outer Banks were out here in force pulling over multiple cars right here on the beach road, all doing the same thing, not stopping for someone in the crosswalk. From Outer Banks locals to out-of-state visitors, the lesson was the same Monday. Stop for someone in the crosswalk or officers would stop you. The signs are posted, the roadway's painted, it's clearly marked. Police from Kill Devil Hills, Nags Head, and Kitty Hawk teamed up for the Watch For Me NC campaign. During the two-hour operation, they wrote 19 citations and gave out another 22 warnings to drivers who didn't stop for someone in the crosswalk. The location at Clark Street along the beach road was selected because of the high number of crashes here, especially during the busy summer months. You know, a common thing, everybody's crossing to go to the beach for the day. Um, we're coming back after a day at the beach and they have to get across. The campaign didn't just focus on drivers, though. Two Dare County deputies on bikes also stopped 60 walkers or fellow bicyclists to make sure they knew where to cross and where to walk. We're not just, you know, specifically targeting one group. It's an education effort that uh, encompasses the entire spectrum of people who are utilizing the roadway, whether it's a a pedestrian, a cyclist, or a motorist. In addition to all the crosswalk violations today, there are also several other citations, including driving without a license, as well as expired tags and expired registration. In Kill Devil Hills tonight, I'm Todd Gorilla, News. So it was a huge so success. A huge we success. made a lot we of contacts that, contact that day. Each, Each citation, citation or warning, or warning ticket, ticket that was issued that was, was also issued on the rack cards that are in the back that explained um, um, pedestrian safety pedestrian on one side and then bicycle safety, bicycle safety, on, the safety on the other. So, so they, it was an educational and enforcement rolled into one. Some of our other of our events other that we've events done, this, we've is, done, this is, we did a mommy did and me, mommy and me bicycle, safety bicycle safety with the kids. With the kids. We do a lot with the kids, kids. start them early, go ahead and instill it when they're young, and they're hopefully young, they'll hold on and at least retain some, some of it um, when they get older. When they get older. National Night Out, National we did a whole, out, did a whole uh, campaign uh, there on National Night Out. Night out. Sign, you see the ministry and crosswalk enforcement. We put those up when we do the enforcement action. So they see it so they before see it they even get to the crosswalk that, that, that we're getting ready to walk, walk across. They see that huge they see sign that tells them we're going to stop them if they don't stop. Daycare. Daycare. And then, of course, we have an course, upcoming have event an upcoming on the 26th. It's, it's not bicycle pedestrian safety specific, specific, but we will have the bicycle have lights out there because it is dark um, on the 26th um, for um, Halloween. Um, are there any questions there any for questions Watch For Me? Or watch am I allowed to ask a couple questions? Absolutely, you are. I didn't know if I went under the three-minute rule. You have longer. You're under You're under your whole own category. Oh, man, I'm speeding through. Let's slow down. This is the only one that has any questions for Sarah. questions for Sarah. Yeah, that was very good. That's great. Yeah. Those bike lights are great. We were at, um, you, you had a booth out at Outrageous, or someone did with this campaign, mm -hmm. and I know our two little guys got lights for their bikes and for our bikes. So. We have a ton of lights and, and the reflectors. So I brought some. I didn't bring enough because I didn't really know how many to expect. But if you need more, just come to the police department. And every police department that was listed on there has received all of this stuff. Uh, posters, anything that you're willing to put up, we'll, we'll take it. Great. Well, thank you so much for your efforts. Thank you. Great campaign. It's a shame that Jack's not here tonight, yeah. Jack McCombs. He would be, hopefully he's aware, and if not, I know he's recovering from his own injury, but um, I'm sure he'll watch this later. I'm sure he's going to be very proud of the efforts as well. That's near and dear to his heart, this message. So, great. Okay. Um, next, under introductions and presentations, we have a presentation um, for Mr. Howard Kimball. Um, Howard recently um, resigned from the planning board. Um, Mr. Kimball served in the planning board um, uh, since January, was the chairman since January of 2011, um, but you were actually first on the planning board. Um, 
trying to think when you first started on the planning board a long time, a long time ago, <laughs> many, many years. Um, but in addition to his, his service on the planning board, um, he's been a long time engaged citizen in Kildable Hills and, and continues to be, whether it's um, he and I'll, I'll say his partner in crime there beside him, Jerry, helped to create the first trash attack years ago, which we just revitalized last year. Um, but, but, you know, just anything that we do in Kildable Hills, he's been a part of. And, um, you know, you've just made such significant contributions. So we wanted to take the opportunity to officially recognize that as those with your, rec with your resignation from the planning board. Um, to thank you for all that you do for our town and hopefully that you'll continue to do um, even though you are not in that capacity but we really appreciate everything Howard you're certainly an asset thank you. so, um, and we do have a, a plaque you'll join me at the, the podium there yeah. thank you or just up front here <laughs> Watch your head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And my, my resignation from the planning board wasn't because I did anything wrong. <laughs> I was a politician, I went on it with that, and I got off of it. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and, and Commissioners. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I had, the, I had yeah. the pleasure of serving with Howard for, I don't know, seven or eight years on the uh, planning board. And uh, it was a lot of fun. We did a lot of, I think we did a lot of good things. And um, <coughs> Howard's also been on the Street Improvement Special Projects Committee and uh, various other subcommittees over the years. And uh, actually, there's three, there's Bill Pitts here <laughs> and Jerry Froelich and Howard and myself. We were the original four of what my granddaughter calls the OMG. <laughs> The old man group that meets meets for lunch every month or so. So actually, we're having a meeting this Friday. So uh, an, o an OMG lunch I have on the calendar. So, and you'll continue to do that, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. For it was a pleasure to serve with you. <laughs> right. That's great. Okay. Any? Um, well, we will move on to new business and item number. Oh, great. Good night, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. Good night, Commissioner Pitt. Good night, <laughs> Good night Bill. Good night. Um, Thanks again, Howard. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to new business item number one. And this is, get my, oh, excuse me, item number, yeah, whoops, item number one. The recommendation um, of award for the 2014-2015 Streets Drainage Improvements and Waterline Replacement Project. Um, let's see, back in our November 13th meeting of 2000, well, in 2013, we approved the 2014-2015 Street and Drainage Projects. Um, and the scope, and that's where I was confused. I'm looking forward for you guys to... <laughs> That's okay. The um, I think Pete, which you were helping under me understand, was this is actually broken out. We have the the original um, project that we're looking at, but then there's two in essence sub projects, X and Y, um, and so the Y is what encumbrances Wrightsville. The X was further extension on South Memorial, please. Um, so I would love for my sake and probably everyone else's kind of an overview of those, but then specifically the, the budgeted numbers here, kind of the, the bottom line figures, how all that breaks out, please. Sure. Uh, I'll give you a, a little bit more of an overview. Um, and, and it may be better if uh, Beverly or somebody else on the staff <coughs> helped with the detail of the, of the numbers. But let's start with the base bid. And the idea of a base bid plus additive alternates is you never really know how good or not so good the bids are going to be. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a really excellent bidding climate, 
you want to be able to double or triple dip and take as much of that good pricing as you can possibly afford. So when we set it, this in motion uh, about a year ago, um, we thought that the total of all types of funding might support with really good pricing the base bid plus what we later decided to call alternates X and Y. Alternate X is that little bad half block of Memorial just south of Baum. The only little piece of ratty concrete street left in the whole run of Memorial there. And then alternate Y, as I said, is that southernmost separated uh, 700 and some foot section of Wrightsville that Mr. Arndt is, is here to speak about. So we figured those are both pretty small projects. We'll add those in, and depending on how the money goes, we might not be able to do either. We might be able to do one or the other, or we might be able to do both plus the base bid. And, and that's basically what your, your choices are tonight. Regarding the base bid project, this is just about the biggest project that I've ever designed uh, and brought to this board for approval. Uh, it's close with the uh, West First Street project, uh, phase five of the multi-use path, but this is actually larger and it's that because it's a combination of water and drainage as well as some street work. And we like to do that where we can so that we don't mess with the folks but once. You know, it'd be a shame to come in and do some drainage work and cut some of the streets and patch them back and then come back in six or seven years later and do some water main replacement. So we look for opportunities to replace old asbestos lines or undersized lines mm -hmm. And if there's drainage needed, to do the drainage while we're there and then fix the streets up nicely when we're done. The drainage to me is the signature part of the base bid work. Uh, a whole great portion of Kill Devil Hills between the highways, especially from the south end up through the uh, memorial property centered on Prospect, that whole area depends upon two ways to drain. The ocean outfalls and we old timers know how unreliable they can be. Usually they go unreliable when we need them the very most. But there's this helper system where the water, instead of going east, goes north up the memorial ditch and then takes a left, goes over to the bypass, follows it for a short distance, then crosses under it about Asheville uh, and skirts along the northern edge of the Park Service property and um, goes on uh, ultimately into the Sound via crossings of Canal and, and West First. Um, the areas centered on Memorial further south than this project often do very poorly when you have a three or four inch rain. Uh, you might have water get six inches a foot, even 18 inches deep. And what's worse, as bad as that is, it's worse how long that water hangs out at unacceptably high levels. It may stay flooded for more than a day, even a couple of days. And that's because all the way up the line, you've got pipes that are 24 inches in diameter. They're not smooth wall. They're rough corrugated steel walls. We've had several rust through all the way to perforation where you didn't have a whole pipe. You had two halves of pipe rusted out at the midline, caving down in on each other. We've had to come in on an emergent basis and fix three or four different driveways and a couple of street crossings with that type of failure. And staff and we decided it's time to stop this nonsense and just attack that whole northern or downstream end to where when we're done, if you approve the main base bid project tonight and it's executed over the next uh, six, seven months or so, there won't be any hole that water has to go through that's smaller than four feet in diameter and it'll all be slick. And when you double the size, you don't double the capacity. You don't quadruple the capacity. You actually multiply it by about six. And when you take into account smooth pipe versus old rough pipe, we're actually looking at an eight to 10 fold increase in capacity for the northern end. Now, there's still some somewhat smaller pipes in the middle that'll have to go through, but we, this is the biggest lick we've ever done on removing bottlenecks to that critical drainage system. Uh, luckily, we've made it, where's some wood I can hit, um, through the 14 hurricane season almost. And I, I hope that we do get through it without a major event. But if we can do this, we'll have that huge line of defense in place 
before the next hurricane season, and it just will make me breathe easier, and I hope it will. All, all y'all, which is the plural of y'all, I think, is all y'all. Oh, yeah. So anyway, that's, that's the big project. Now, usually my forecasting is a little better than this, because um, we did get good prices, even though it may not exactly look like it. What happened, though, was as we went through the details of the design process, two things were discovered. Number one, when we first conceived this project, we thought we could stop at Memorial at the Woodmere intersection where we had done one section of 48 inch pipe five years ago. We thought we could be done, but the bottom elevation of the pipe is too low there and there's, other, there's three major crossings downstream which would require the water to step up to go out and that would really reduce the effectiveness. It's like Evil Knievel jumping 90% of the way across the Snake River Canyon. Pretty impressive, but not that satisfying when you splat on the far wall there. So we decided that it, we would just have to bite the bullet and go ahead and replace the culverts at Prospect, Lowell, and Asheville and clean out the ditch from Woodmere, uh, Memorial and Woodmere, west down to the bypass and along the bypass up to the crossing just beyond Asheville. That probably added $100,000 to the originally forecast price. Also, we had planned on just doing a two-inch overlay on most of Memorial, but as we looked at it more closely, we realized that would be short-sighted, and we've now slated all of Memorial for the full three-and-a-half-inch rebuild, where all we count on the existing road to do is act kind of like a base. That was another probably 40000 or so uh, additional, uh, the difference in those two. But by then, we'd already committed to do the design on alternates X and Y, so we put it all out to bid, and we got back in the bids, and you've got the report. I won't read or recite it to you. But uh, RPC was our low bidder. They were about 5% below Barn Hill, and then George Raper and Son was up a goodly amount more, but still a respectable bid. And uh, when you add in, we, we think this type of work that includes a fair amount of water main work, which is not very high contingency uh, work, You've heard me recommend contingency percentages as high as 10% in some cases and commonly 8. We've dropped the contingency percent here to 6% because of the blended nature of the work. We think that'll be fine. We typically carry anywhere from half to three quarters of that contingency allowance into the next cycle. But you never know when you're going to have one to where we do need much or all of it. We don't want to be caught short if we run into a lot of unforeseen circumstances. So there's contingency, there's my fee for the construction oversight, and um, then there's the add-on. So uh, if I remember the funding right, we needed about 40,000 and change, 40 several thousand. To do just the base bid work, we would need you to find about 40, 45, somewhere in that neighborhood, 1,000 more than was available in the road fund. There is no challenge with the water fund, keeping water stuff under water funding and road and drainage stuff under road and drainage funding, um, we would need uh, all of the funding that was forecast to be available plus a little transferred from somewhere. And then if you wanted to go ahead and do, as, as Mr. Arndt would wish you to do, and accept alternate Y, the rights for work, that would require that same 40000 extra plus about another 100000 extra to be able to do all of base bid plus alternate Y. We think those are your two reasonable choices. Obviously, you could also do alternate X as well, but um, our thought was that might be pushing the envelope a little bit much. So uh, I probably won't um, want to get down to the nitty-gritty numbers. There are folks here who remain nameless who are better than that than I. <laughs> but if you'd allow me a quick point of personal privilege, Number one, I would like, and I'm sorry he's gone to celebrate how much I've enjoyed working with Mr. Kimball over the years. And then I wanted to let you know that uh, as a, a personal fan and um, somebody who appreciates the Outer Banks a great deal, I want to let you know where my wife and I decided to purchase the home to which we expect to retire. That would be 302 St. Louis Street in Kill Devil Hills. <laughs> that will replace our slightly more humble abode at 101 East Metal Art, and um, we close with that 
with the help of an associate of Mr. Michaels back on September 25th and are looking forward to some a lot of time spent there in uh, hopefully decades in the future. Great. So now well, I'll stand by for questions. That's great. Great. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Um, and so yeah, we may put Beverly on the spot. So just to then, just to accomplish with the base bid, if you look at what we had already budgeted and allocated, that's why we would need the additional $43,000 from our fund balance. Yes, ma'am, and I, I can speak to that. That is okay. um, the Budget Amendment 7, mm -hmm. the undesignated fund balance, 43-5, um, in addition to the street reserve, which is the 42, um, we were comfortable in asking the board for the 43 from the undesignated fund balance. Um, but when you start looking at the other two al alternates, we feel like we're just a little bit too early in this budget year to, to make that request. And as I understand from looking at this further, then the, because if we were going to add al alternative Y or the other, that's 90, just to do that part is just under 100000 dollars $99,629. And then alternate X is $162,412 on top of that. Yes, ma'am. And that's after we would already pulled 40, the 43 almost, to almost, just do the... Uh, yes, a little over 43.5. Now, what would happen if we get through... Because, yeah, we're, we're not even six months into our fiscal year. What if we get into when this is somewhat wrapping up and it looks like, wait a minute, we may be able to look at our fund balance and see where, I mean, do we have the opportunity to revisit this during the construction phase and see how it's going to see if at that point, or does it need to be, it's kind of a decision now and then you have to rebid that later for I think, X? I think it would be a decision now and you'd have to rebid, but I'll defer to the engineer. Uh, I'm, it almost may be a question for the attorney. I don't know. You either make some sort of contingent award or something now, or you rebid it. Rebidding it certainly is an option. Um, it is a small project. It, if it were bid separately, it could probably have a time frame of perhaps 90 days. Um, but I just... Right now, I can't think of a good way to, to, to do some quick negotiation with RPC and say we would award this conditionally or something of that nature. Uh, so you'd probably be stuck rebidding it. And, and then, um, frankly, I thought was going to be to package this up with uh, perhaps what we called alternate Y and some additional work, and maybe that would be the... Uh, Part of the 1516 package of work because one of the other things that, that happens here <coughs> is usually there's enough money to do every th the street project that you award about now and then there needs to be a little bit more money when street improvements and special projects meets and gets me started on the design of the 1516 project so you know right now there isn't even there, there's no money for that so maybe what we do is we take a pass on ESVI design other than maybe the little sidewalk project for 15, 16, and we just put those two guys out. And I don't know. Maybe it's one way that we take an easy year and store up some chestnuts for uh, Bay Drive phases three and four, shameless commercial, uh, in some <laughs> subsequent year. <laughs> it's right. Okay, sure. Well, because I think... From my perspective, thinking about where we are with our fund balance, you know, just to get this done, we have to pull forty-three thousand, um, and and you know, while we we are certainly meeting the obligation we have to with where our fund balance is, we're not plush in our fund fund balance. Yeah, and we have so, we have other uh, other projects that that we may see some of these same kind of numbers that we mm -hmm. have to we have to look at. We just felt that. It was too much for just street and drainage improvements at this time. Mm -hmm. Certainly not taking it off the table, and it, you know, like Pete was saying, possibly be the the project for fifteen for next year, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions that you guys have? 
Yeah, I have one. Uh, if we do the main project and the the Y, and the Y is about ninety thousand dollars, right? So far, am I correct? And then, if we decide not to do the Y at this time, whenever we do decide to do it, is it going to cost more because it's not included in this project? What we're recommending that you do is the base bid, which does not include the Y or the X. Right, I understand. Is the price 90000 for the Y based on if it was done at this time? It's, well, it was, it was based on a, a, it's a package. Yes, but if it's, so, yes, I mean, if it's, it's going to be done at a later date, it's going to cost more than 90000 that's, there's no way to there's no way to know. It could, but I mean, it, it could, could be less. But it but it could it could be less depending on what the package is. I mean, I, okay. I don't know. Madam Manager, if I might, I I would expect we saw some economies of packaging it together, but not as much as if they had been geographically close together, right. and that just isn't the case. So, well, yeah. as you said, it would be a fairly random thing if we packaged uh, just X and Y together. Uh, that could very well come back with bids very similar to the 225, 250 range that the total of them might be. Mm -hmm. So, and they are closer together, closer to one another than, well, I don't know. There's all sort of spaced along. So, I, I, I don't, I, I don't have any basis to tell you the prices will be more. I would expect they probably would be a little more, but not. Hugely. We're not looking at significant numbers if we do it now or later, though. Right? There's no trend I'm seeing right. that says you really are messing up if you don't package it all up now. It, it, they were good bids, but uh, perhaps not as good as we were getting uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I think we're starting to see mm -hmm. the economy improved, and that's what yeah. happens. Um, And these projects are all uh, selected in order of a priority and, a, and because of the pressing need. And based so on by the street improvement by the committee, mm -hmm. and so by if we were to approve what's being recommended, X and Y, since they've already been identified, they will stay at the priority, which would make sense for them to be addressed. If we cannot do it before without having to draw a significant amount of fund balance, they would be on the plate for the funding that we put in. And we have been putting on an annual basis to fund the street improvement project. Yes, ma'am. But there wouldn't be like a, uh, another option. There would be an actual job to do. They, right? they would. That would be your base bid. Okay. Right. They would be part of the base bid for the next right. for fifteen sixteen. Right. Other questions, comments? I can't, I can't see us pulling additional funds from the fund balance this early. I mean. I'd like to see that happen, but I, I yeah, yeah, I agree too. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if the board would like, I'll be happy to go over the bullets for the motion. It's on page two of the memo. Um, your motion would include um, to approve the contract with RPC Contracting for the 2014-15 street drainage and water improvement project, North Kitty Hawk Shores, in the amount of one million. $194,640 and to authorize its execution by the manager to approve the engineering service agreement with ESI of Virginia Inc. and the total amount of $78,900 for construction oversight to approve a 6% not to exceed contingency for the street and drainage portion of the project in the amount of $38,302.80 and to approve a water contingency in the amount of $33,000 $375.60, and lastly, to authorize expenditure of $442,934 from the Street Capital Reserve Fund, $43,528.80 from the undesignated fund balance. Um, of that, $649,535.60 will be water fund related, 209220 will be expended from the POW bill. $442,934 will be expended from the Street Capital Reserve Fund. This is for a total of $1,345,214.40. Do I need Okay. Thank you. Questions? Comments? 
motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion uh, based on the bullets that uh, Tom Manager just referenced. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So, Thank you. John, um, I'm sorry, we just couldn't see pulling out the additional fund balance for this year. Um, your project that you're specifically interested will, it's actually the number one priority. If we can't address it before, it will be addressed with the 2015-16 um, budget because it will be budgeted in that. I have a question. I rode past this supposed cluster, Ferris, Baker, Raleigh, Carlo, Sutton. I would love to live on one of those roads versus Rice Hill. What is the urgency? I don't understand. I'm not an engineer, but just yeah. driving by that cluster, I would love, I would love to live in that area versus where I live. I'm embarrassed to live on where I live right now. Um, um, I'm sorry, sorry, what I'd like to do so we can continue with our meeting, do you mind possibly um, having a conversation and having a to, to address? Happy to. In, okay. in six words, those roads aren't getting road work. They're just getting water main. But I'll explain okay. that to Mr. Okay. That would be great. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay. Um, the next item is item number two under new business. This is the recommendation for approval of plans and specifications for fiscal year 2014-2015 sidewalk improvements along US 158. And that we did have an update at our mm. seats tonight, if you guys have that revised section. And that's, that's simply that the budget amendment wasn't necessary. Um, that's the only, 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 only revision. Back. That's good. Okay. <laughs> so you can probably reference the one you made on, right. on the first one. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That. That's okay. Um, so basically, there, there's kind of three um, notes in here and actually Matt do you want to because I'm forgive you and you've worked on the all we the have grant all we do or, Pete, too. or Pete can say, jump in on this Pete. one too okay Pete, Pete has gracious, graciously uh, agreed to do this one too. okay <laughs> we're going to do this one too <laughs> okay. my gracious um, this one is simple uh, the very we call these phase one and or excuse me phase two and phase three phase three is later this phase two is what's before you tonight. Phase one is what I think was a very successful project done earlier this year uh, with what we call minimal plans. And that's why my fee here is so much lower than what you're used to seeing. This is like 8,500 bucks to prepare minimal plans for two sections of sidewalk, followed by $4,000 to do bidding of those two sections. But you know which we're talking about. It's the Mako Lowe's up, uh, across Professor Hacker's to Mako Mike's, and then it's a little short stretch down around Goddard Street. Uh, you could almost do this with very minimal plans like we used uh, earlier this year, but we think we need a little bit of topo this time. We didn't do any field run topographic surveying uh, last year or, or earlier this year, and through Tony's good efforts and Steve's and a lot of Careful. I mean, you got to make up for that lack of information by some good field engineering judgment. We had a good contractor that uh, got a little bit of a late start, but he had a good superintendent and good oversight. We worked together and feel fit things in. Uh, we've got some places on this project where we do need to get a little bit of topo, like right around the Goddard Street ditch, so that we can get a little bit better handle on how to do any drainage pipe extension there how to deal with the amount of fill dirt needed. That was a little bit of a challenge we had in this past project. So this one is building on the knowledge that we gain working with these minimal plan projects. And sometimes topo surveying can be a third to 40% of the cost of design of one of these projects. It just isn't mostly needed to that level of detail just to add sidewalk to an existing road. So this, um, this would give us that little $8,500 to get a little bit of topo and prepare plans on the same basis of what we did last year and then put it out to bids with the uh, additional $4,000. Okay. Questions on this? And I'm sure everyone picked up that the grant application, this would be for the next year um, of funding, but that was submitted. submitted. 
Great. And that would take it from where the Mega Mike's ends through to West Third Street, where it would pick up the West Third Street, completing the west side except for in front of the Wright Memorial for the entire length of town. Great. And do you know, do we know when the, we'll hear back on that grant? The grant committee, I believe, meets in November or December. We won't get official word until probably February or March, but typically they will give you a phone call okay. and let you know that it was approved. Funds will not be available till July 1st, 2015. The next fiscal year. Into that, right. right. So Pete was giving us a little preview as to that, that um, engineering and bidding is going to be more expensive right. because of the topo that needs to be done because of the enormous ditch. It, it. But that's for next year. It was right. just and especially some budgeting. Mm -hmm. When we do do the DARE Center, uh, we've got to not just design sidewalk there, but it's so cramped. We've actually got to put curb and gutter on the existing turn lanes for the DARE Center, and that's that's a little order of magnitude more serious than just dropping a sidewalk in. <coughs> okay. Is there, like, an alternate to go, like, through their parking lot at all so we don't have to do all that? You know, um, Commissioner, I looked at that, but there just isn't, I mean... You're not going to get people to go all the way over into the parking lot, and I looked for a way to see if we could put it on the little peninsula of grass just behind the parking lot, and it just, uh, it not just work. didn't work out. It would probably be flooded half the time there. anyway. So. Now, we've got it in the right place now, but it's just we're going to have to put a curb and gutter, and it'll be one of those where, where the turn lanes aren't. It'll be, there'll be a little separation between the back of curb and the sidewalk, and then when the turn lanes come out, the back of curb will come up pretty much touching the sidewalk and then crosswalks at the entrances. But that's something for about eight months from now. Sure. And that's what we're applying for the grant for. Right. Yep. So hopefully we get 50% of that. Grant that would help a lot. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a motion would be in order. Make, make a motion that we approve the uh, plans and specifications for the phase two of the sidewalk improvements. I'll second that. Okay. Any other comments? Questions? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thanks. Pete. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. Next is under new business item number three is recommended amendment to chapter 93 section 93.03 .03, notice in order to abate and to add section 93.07 chronic violators. Um, let's see. And I think Greg's not here today, but some of these were out of his suggestions. So Meredith, I think you, Meredith can address you wanna? this. She is the town attorney. Great. Okay. And if it's anything hard, we'll give it to the town attorney. <laughs> this, is, this is two amendments to the, the nuisance ordinance, both to help the town with enforcement and to um, deal with chronic violators for our, our nuisances. The first one is to allow for our uh, notices of violation and abatement notices to be sent certified and by first class mail. Right now, our, our ordinance only allows by certified, so if someone refuses to sign for it, we can't start any processes. This would allow us to do it by certified and by first class mail. And after 10 days, if the first class mail's not been returned, even if they haven't signed for it, we have a presumption of delivery and we can move forward in the process because nothing can start until you get that first notice to, to be delivered. The second one is uh, for chronic violators. It was something that was done by the North Carolina General Assembly in 2013. It defines chronic violators as a person who has had three nuisance violations in the previous calendar year. And in that case, the town will be allowed to take immediate action to re remedy the violation at the expense of the, the owner by placing a lien on the property. Um, this is simply something the uh, North Carolina General Assembly did, and we decided to place it as part of our ordinance so that we had more options for chronic violators. <coughs> And then there's one small change that changes tax collector to finance officer, I believe. Okay, thank you. 
questions on this? Comments? I will tell you that we've had a lot of difficulty the past year getting certified letters accepted. Mm -hmm. And we had one violation that the person was able to skirt the letter for almost a year and a half. Yeah. 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 So I mean, it's definitely a more lean and efficient process if we were to adopt. So that slows down days. the process yeah. when you're getting chronic calls about yeah. something going on next door to somebody and they can't, we can't do anything because we can't get them to accept their letter. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I did talk to Meredith earlier about, earlier about this and the, and the three nuisance violations that we're talking about here are not major nuisance violations. They're, they're more minor things. They're not things that would be something like, I mean, we're not going to go tear somebody's house down. We're talking about no. very minor things like <laughs> just grass that. that's being, <laughs> yeah, that's overgrown. Is it, that would be something that has to go through um, major legal processes. Not, I told Brandy if there was any major violations that required attorneys, there would be courts. And um, this was more for some of our nuisance violations that deal with um, junk or, or things that, you know, bring in rodents, vegetation, overgrown vegetation that is chronic, um, we would be able to, to help the neighborhood out with that. And before we did anything, we would check with the town attorney. <laughs> I think these recommended changes make sense. Absolutely. Yeah. It enables the staff to do what they need to do when they need to do it. Okay. Um, anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we adopt the amendment to Chapter 93 nuisances as presented. I'll second that. Okay. Any other comments, questions, discussion? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. All right, next is the 2014 progress report for floodplain management hazard mitigation plan. Um, this is something annually that we have presented to us. And is it going to be Debbie or Meredith? Sure. Or? This, um, this actually requires no um, action of the board, but it is required um, to review it, the report for the flood Plain management hazard mitigation plan in an open meeting. It has been re um, released to the media and it's been made public. Um, the um, progress report on, is on the website and it's been distributed through our various electronic means. Um, a copy of the, the report will be placed in the um, Cuddleville Hills branch of the Dare County Library and additional publications are available. Um, this report basically just um, explains what has been done um, this past year with the town and maintaining our system, our record. Um, it outlines each item that's been done and how and what the, um, the progress on that was. So this is simply for your information as well as, as the public. Okay. Great. I was going to say, thanks Meredith for putting it up. It is easy to read as far yes. as the updates because all the updates the, are in red. With the, with yes. the color. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks to Meredith for doing that. Questions or comments for this? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no Thank action, you. but if you have any questions, now would be the time, or otherwise you can follow up with Meredith <coughs> later. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Debbie. Yes, ma'am. Okay. With that, we can move on to item number five. This is a request for approval of application for certificate of taxi cab operation for Atlantic Cab. As I understand in reading this, this is as a result of change in ownership requires this, but other than that, the business itself is not changing, it's just the owner is changing. Um, so the new owner, Eduardo Barbosa, um, I guess is purchasing it from Josh Whitley. He had actually been, um, was actually an employee of, of Mr. Whitley. <clears throat> Great. So our, you know, we have, as I understand this, when you're when you're looking at this and like this is presented to us, um, we have the options to approve, disapprove, or you could schedule a public hearing, um, right? If you wanted to, if we wanted to, um, in in this case, it's not establishing a new business, it's not changing the business, it's truly a change of ownership. Um, right. So, like for me, that kind of factors into my thoughts of whether you know what action we should take, but. 
would like to get your thoughts. You don't have any thoughts or existing business? So yes, pretty simple. Oh, I don't have a problem with. It. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the application for a certificate of taxi cab operation for Atlantic Cab as presented. Okay. That's a first. Anyone? I'll second. Second. Any other questions, comments, discussion? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, moving. Before we go on, about Absolutely. this, it, about having these, having us approve these applications, I remember this was discussed once before, and I don't think it was with this current board, but prior, maybe prior to that. It seems like, in my recollection in the past, it's always been pretty much of a, for lack of a better word, almost a rubber stamp. There's, if it passes the police check, background check and everything it's more or less a foregone conclusion um what uh maybe steve could help if that's the right way to go is what we'd legally require to do this uh or is there some way that this could be handled well, you, you, well, you have an ordinance that says you're legally right. required to do it I, I do not recall if there's a north carolina general statute that says you have to do that or not I, I'd have to take a look at yeah. that. Um, it's it's no big deal in this thing. I mean, we've done we dealt with them before. And it yeah. just, in uh, fact, in fact, we were we were discussing putting this on the consent agenda, but but then when we were reviewing, you know, Mary pointed out this part here where it says that the board um, may schedule a public hearing, so that it made it a little mm -hmm. awkward just try to put it on the consent agenda. But I agree, Commissioner Hogan. Maybe we should revisit this and see if there's a way to. Um, to kind of tidy it up a little, we're, we're not um, taking too much time for the business to get established. You know, it's, certainly, if there's an issue or concern that the police department would have, would, would have it would come to you. Um, but, but we'll review the ordinance okay. itself and well, the general you. statutes. There could be something in there to, to modify it to make it with administrative approval if yes, it's truly just name change. Absolutely. And, and then, right. Yeah. More, I think more streamlined. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Open well, to you. seeing yes. that. Yeah. Good suggestion. Well, Okay. Moving on to Commissioner's agenda. Commissioner Midget. I do not have anything today. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Appleman? Nothing at this time. Okay. Commissioner Rebottom? Um, I just want to thank the town. I think you've done a great job. October seems to be the month that they pack everything into. We've had a lot of um, social events in the last few weeks, so you did a great job on the ice cream social. There were a lot of people there. Uh, um, we had a great time and um, also attended the fire department open house. That was great as well. Um, again, um, my family had a wonderful time. Um, and I, I think, again, it's, it's always great to see people out in the community. So I, I think these events are something that I, I just, I, I want to thank the employees who, who take their time to do this. I want to thank you, Debbie. I want to thank the department heads, chief and chief, I don't, I don't know if the other chief left out. or not, but um, <laughs> it, it, it takes some work to get these things together. I think sometimes when the people come, they don't realize exactly how much work go, that goes behind them. But um, I, 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 I've planned some events, and it's, it's, not, it's not like they don't come together as easily as they look like they flow. So um, kudos to y'all for doing that as well. And I did want to mention um, Jack McCombs. We talked about him just a little bit earlier. Um, he, he is recovering, ironically, from a cycling accident. So um, he spent several nights in the hospital, a couple in ICU actually. Um, but he will proudly tell you that he qualified for national senior games in the process. So he, he actually had an accident at the finish line at, oh, no. at state finals. So yeah, when he crossed the finish line, he, he apparently the two people behind him overtook him. And um, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a bad thing, but it just it, I, something having went over the handlebars. So um, he's home now. He actually was at the bomb center today. So he's getting out a little bit, but he had a major concussion and um, a couple broken ribs he, he he he's I don't even think he knew where he was he was posting on Facebook I'm in the hospital and then he told me later well I was in ICU I was like and you were posting on Facebook I, I saw that too <laughs> but um <laughs> at any rate he's he does a lot for cycling so um I'm I'm certain he probably would have been here if he could get out as much as he would like to right now and I saw him today he said I think I look better than I feel <laughs> so I said I'm so sorry <laughs> But um, I just want to wish him well if he watches this, and I'm certain that he will. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. Okay, Mr. Tim. 
Yeah, I have a couple of things. Um, first of all, thanks for sticking around about the disc golf. I, I, I may be in hindsight could have maybe handled this a little bit earlier, but uh, there was a lot of things on the agenda. Um, in addition to what Daryl mentioned uh, about the, the work that they've done on this, it's my opinion, and I think um, from the, what little I've spoken to some of the other commissioners, that uh, this seems like something that we should probably move forward with, um, even though we have um, a plan, a, a tentative uh, plan in place uh, from uh, surface uh, six, seven, eight. And one of the reasons why I feel like we could be able to do this is because based on the the money that's uh, the private grant from the, the Logans and the uh, sponsorship opportunities and the volunteer work that's been pledged, I think this is a, can end up being a, a relatively inexpensive um, uh, addition to the town. And I was thinking about it because the other day I was down at the park and we have the skate park. And I don't think there's any doubt that that's used, except for maybe just the park itself, people walking around, that, that's used, very heavily used by the people in the town, most of the young people. And there was some controversy about the money spent at that time, and I think it was 75000 plus. And this is uh, based on the information that uh, Daryl and uh, Derek and uh, Bob, uh, Mr. Sanders, got together. This would be significantly less, that, less than that even without uh, some of the um, sponsorships and the donations. So I think it's something we should move forward with. There's going to be some uh, legalities uh, as far as volunteers release liability. So anybody, you know, that wants to work back there. I, th I know Steve is very familiar with that. And um, there's uh, sponsorships available. Uh, it's done throughout the, the disc golf uh, community. Almost every public course has the holes are sponsored and the, the tees are sponsored and um, there's various ways that that can be done. Daryl mentioned one that was like a, a $500 fee for like a three-year sponsorship, which uh, is pretty significant. Um, if you can fill up all, if you can sponsor all the holes that you have, that can be a significant amount of money, 18000 plus, I guess, for or 9,000 plus rather for 18 holes. Um, and there's sponsorships available too for the dog park and I I'm definitely feel like that's something we should also do at this time. Number one, we can make room for it and there again it's gonna be relatively inexpensive. Um, and I say that in the hopes that we do get the sponsorships and uh, I think with uh, a little <coughs> bit of research we can find out what's out there in addition to maybe some grants too from the Visitors Bureau or um, other sources, which I'm not very familiar with myself, but I'm sure that they're out there. And I just want to thank uh, uh, Daryl and uh, Derek and Bob for the, the amount of work that they've done. And also, uh, Lewis, is that from Innova? That yeah, that Lewis has got Russell from Innova. Yeah. Lewis Russell or Russell? Um, he, he is actually like the number two guy at Innova. Okay. He's a friend of Lewis Hoffman, who is also oh, okay. Russell. Yeah, and I understand that I, he was very, very kind to just come down and, and do that and take a look at it. And those are the kind of people that generally charge a consulting fee. And he was uh, very impressed with the site and thought that it would be a lot of courses that he's seen. He said this could be one of the nicer ones once it gets fully developed. And the idea of starting off small with the, the gravel or crush and run, I guess what do they call it, parking lot or whatever. And the parking spaces and the and the uh, porta potty. I'm not a big fan, but I know they've done that up in Duck. They have an enclosure and they have a handicap one, and I think it can work. And um, I'm going to get together with staff and and uh, you guys. Maybe we can get together sometime in the very near future and talk about this and find out which way this has to go. I mean, up come to the board and planning board, special projects committee. I'm not really sure, but I want to make sure we do it right and get it going in the right direction and get some staff assistance on it. So I appreciate it very much. I'd really like to see it happen the sooner the better. I think it would be great. I, I think, I mean, I don't know. I think there might be consensus that this is something we should keep looking at. Yeah. Now? Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you.
Uh, the other thing I had was uh, I uh, had an opportunity to uh, do a ride along with the police department the week before last. I, I rode with Officer uh, Dave Pierce. And, uh, Thank you. Thanks, Derek. And uh, I, I went at 12 o'clock. I was planning on going well into the evening, but I had forgotten during the day that I had an event I had to attend, so I had to cut it short about 5.30. But I intend to do it again. I talked to the chief earlier when I came in tonight, and uh, not much happened uh, for in the five and a half hours that I was there. We had two minor traffic stops, but um, it was very informative, and I got to see how I, I was very impressed with all the equipment in the police car and how information at their fingertips. I mean, they stop somebody, and within three or four minutes, they know everything about you, you know, which uh, kind of scary in a way, but uh, <laughs> he said, the chief suggested that maybe I go at, at night sometime. <laughs> on a weekend, it may not be so boring. So, but it's open to anybody. You don't have to be a commissioner or anybody in particular. You can just just let them know, and you can go. And it's uh, it was very informative. The only thing I, he told me was stay in the car and shut up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I did. But it was it was great. And I, I do I actually do intend to do it again. So, if you guys have something you know, time you have, need to fill, go for it. You right in the front or the back. <laughs> My wife said it'd be the first time I rode in the front without handcuffs. So. <laughs> the things we find out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's great. All right, anything else this evening? Um, I think that's all we see. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's it for Thank me. You. Okay. Um, moving on to the mayor's agenda. Um, I have one item this evening that was in your packet. Uh, it's a proclamation uh, for October as Dis Disability Employment Awareness Month. And this was actually shared. I don't know how many of you know Ramada, uh, Renata Maturoli. Maturoli, yeah, I stumble with her name. But um, she's been a huge advocate and, and does great work and has for years in our community um, uh, with, with, I guess, whether it's disabled children primarily or, or children with disabilities. And um, she has kind of been advocating along with others to get this adopted in North Carolina. And it was just this year um, with, with Governor McCrory just recently. Um, and so, Mary, thank you for helping us with adopting this. When she was kind of proudly sharing that, uh, I was on her listserv and thought, you know, it'd be nice for us to continue to help promote that effort and awareness with adopting a similar resolution for the town of Kittle Hills. Um, and really, this is just um, bringing awareness to, and, and I like the tagline, expect, employ, and empower those with, with disabilities. Um, you know, they can certainly um, be contributing and, and valuable and are valuable resources and, uh, to our communities. So uh, with that being said, I would like to ask for a motion to um, declare October as Disability Employment Awareness Month in the town of Kittleba Hills by adopting the attached proclamation. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you so much. And I um, echo your comments about the great work the town staff are doing, um, specifically with the Ice Cream Social. And I apologize, Chief, I was out of town wrapping up my last week uh, with um, my previous job and so I was not able to be there but I certainly saw pictures from lots of people on Facebook that had a great time um, but the ice cream social the turnout was tremendous I was just so impressed by the number of people and um, you know obviously it's it's for Kittleville Hills but being that we're so close to the school it was neat to see several families that would come over after school and enjoy it even if they didn't live in Kittleville Hills they were celebrating with us so um, which that was nice so um, with that we'll move on to the town manager's agenda no ma'am nothing this evening thank you town attorney agenda not tonight okay the consent agenda yes ma'am um, just two items on the consent agenda the first the um, minutes from the September 8th, 2014 meeting, and second, um, a budget amendment to record local facility giving um, program grant funds from the Walmart Foundation. And staff would recommend approval of the consent agenda as presented. Okay, thank you. I'll make that motion. 
I'll second. Okay, any comments, discussion? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is the second time set aside this evening for public comment. We're only, we're down to three <laughs> that may participate in public comment. Uh, do you guys have anything to address the board with tonight? Bless, Bless you. you. Bless you. No? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you for being here. Um, and with that, unless anyone has anything else, we'll call for oh, Yes. One more quick thing. Um, mm -hmm. Our, uh, I just wanted to put in a plug for our son-in-law, who we're very proud of, he uh, works at UNC. He's the uh, graphics uh, department director for the highway safety program, and a lot of the stuff you saw came out of his department up there on the screen tonight. So, oh, great. Oh, I'm very proud yeah, of him. I'm glad you did put a he was in town this weekend. As a matter of fact, was uh, Leanne, our youngest, was in town for their 20th uh, uh, high school reunion. So he was in town over the weekend. So, oh, that's great. Yeah. Neat. It's nice to see it close to him his work. So, okay. Well, with that, a motion to adjourn is in order. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Okay. Anything else? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.